My name is Maria Gaspar. I'm based in Chicago and a 2015 Visual Arts awardee. You can feel it, like when you cross the river, you can feel the jail is coming. The energy, everything shifts and changes. The air is different. It's almost like the sky looks different. I don't try to get caught over here at night. It's too rough, because they got Latin Kings down here, Sam City Royals down there, Vice Lords back that way. So it's a big boundary, and they all can't overstep their boundary. They try to limit their movement around the jail because they know that if they come out of the jail, they're going to get caught back in the jail. It feels like it's got its back turned on you. That's what it feels like. It feels like it wants nothing to do with you. It's just a big, tall wall, and that's what it is. It allows then the community to just turn its back on that space. These are excerpts from interviews I did at the Cook County Jail in 2013. I was 12 years old when I first visited the largest architecture of my neighborhood in Chicago called the Cook County Jail. It was part of a scared straight program meant to discourage at-risk youth from juvenile crime. I was struck by the disproportionate number of black and Latino men, folks that resembled my family, friends, and community, the people I cared about. And later, I'd embark on a long-term art project that examines how a jail's proximity frames, surveils, and stigmatizes the identity of an entire neighborhood. And to grapple with these issues, my creative capital project, newly named Radioactive, is a series of audio broadcasts that examine the largest jail in the country by connecting those who live outside of its walls with those on the inside. It's about deconstructing a place of power and powerlessness by using audio recordings to capture the humanity of people affected by the prison industrial complex. The jail is the largest pre-detention facility in the country. It's not a prison. It's 96 acres in scale, and that's about 74 American football fields. Yearly, there are 100,000 people in detained and awaiting trial every year. 80,000 working class people live in the surrounding area. My initial research included examining the politics of space, the perceptual, the political, how it's both visible and invisible. For example, the yearly Mexican Day Parade sets up floats along a main segment of the jail wall. Here, a local summer carnival sets up fun rides directly across the jail. In which direction are people looking? How are they looking and who is being looked at? So Radioactive emerges from these in investigations that develop through the 96 Acres Project, a project I began in 2012 that includes collaborative public actions and performance work at and around the jail. It tends to blur the line between praxis and poesis. Early on, I witnessed my mother create Spanish language programming through community radio in the late 80s. She was also, as she likes to proudly claim, the first Latina clown to graduate from clown school. <laughs> Her weekends were spent at birthday parties entertaining local families with animal balloons and clown tricks. It was both beautiful and completely absurd. <laughs> but her example burned an imprint in my gut and in my heart around collective meaning making and how art can carve out spaces of belonging and liberation through joy, criticality, and tenderness. Here is a recent clip of a projected intervention on the jail compound that describes a story of love and loss between a daughter and her incarcerated father. Please play. I feel like it's breathing air into the, the neighborhood, like a side of, it's literally the side of the jail from inside and out, because we're representing the letters Melissa gets from her father, and then what he saw in there, and then her reflections about it and what was happening outside of jail when she was at home with her mom. I happened to be passing by, my daughter was looking at it. She's like, mom, let's see what it is. So then we started reading it. It, it made me sad because it made me think about my son and his daughter. You know, he made a mistake once and then he did it twice. So she's little right now, but when she grows up, maybe that's how she's gonna feel. A lot of people don't understand it until you're living it, you know? I mean, I never expected my son to be in there. Until it happens to you, then you know how it feels. 
This fall, Radioactive is preparing to launch a radio program at two programming sites, one inside the jail working with the currently detained and another at a local park district. So I'm interested in how sound can trans transcend borders and even collapse them. So with your support, I could use a little help. A publisher for an artist's book that acts as artifact documenting the entirety of the project, both pedagogical and artistic, sound engineering support, and newly added a composer for the production of high quality audio, access to national sound, sound libraries archives to share work, and web app development for creating a unique online platform. Radioactive makes it urgent for us and everyone to imagine a world that doesn't build more prisons, but rather unbuilds them. Thank you. <laughs>